Associates. Coming to you from the Area Command, 380, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. We want to welcome everybody to our program today, this afternoon, this evening. It is presently 5.20 p.m. on Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. Folks, I came on the air to talk about a very large dangerous solar eruption. This eruption occurred late last night. It was an S1 class solar flare. This was an X1 class solar flare. Now, why am I talking about it now? Last night when this solar flare first erupted, this was not the only solar flare at all. There were many solar flares erupting and from the same location that the X class one erupted from. Then, just below that, and I'm going to give you information now that you can see in just a half a shake here. But what happened was another sunspot just below the spot where the X1 class solar flare erupted from, also erupted. That eruption was an M1, M1 class solar flare. Now, why am I talking about it? Because, folks, this is still a dangerous situation. Both sunspots were erupting at the same time, and they continued to erupt. Mark Wages went on the air right after the X1 erupted. And we saw live from the sun, from the SOHO Solar Observatory satellite that's in Earth orbit, looking directly at the sun. That solar flare, guys, is a dangerous solar flare. It kept erupting. It was not the only solar flare. I want to make that clear. It was not the only solar flare that was erupting. There was many of them. And then the sunspot just below that started to erupt as well. So this has continued on. This has continued long time now. We're going to continue to see these solar flares for quite a while. Now, these solar flares are Earth-directed. The last two solar flares that we had were up in the northern part, Earth-facing part of the sun. However, those solar flares were directed out up north of where our planet is. If we had any effect from that, or had, saw any effect from that, those two solar flares, it was only a sideways glance. The Earth only had a sideways glance at those solar flares. This is something much different from that. Okay, this is a lot different from that. I want to show you now what happened. Okay. Just a minute. Give me a second. I'm trying to bring up this solar flare here. I've got a picture of it here. Oh, that's weird. I've never seen anything like this happen before. Okay, I'm going to show this to you right now. What you're seeing right here is the top solar flare you see here, Earth-facing, was an X1 class solar flare. But like I said, from that very sunspot, it kept erupting. It kept erupting for four hours. 
and occasionally it still spouts off solar flares now. The solar sunspot just beneath that is also erupting from the sun and is still erupting. You can see it sending out x-rays and plasma radiation from that one solar flare. I hope you can see that. Okay. You can still see it sending out plasma radiation from the sun. Okay. I've got it on my monitor and I'm showing it to you. You can still see that. Now, over on the left side, what they call the terminator of the sun, that sunspot that is erupting there is going to be Earth-facing within the next couple of days. We need to be on the lookout for more solar radiation from that flare, that sunspot as well. But these two sunspots are Earth-facing and will be Earth-facing for several days now. That X1, the radiation, hit Earth within four hours, millions of miles per second. Okay? That's how fast that traveled. Now, that's not the only one, guys. That's not the only one. Let's take another look at another uh, flare right there. Okay? This is still the same flare, but it's a different um, look at it. Okay? Look at that. Now, if you look close here, if you look close, there's a circular pattern off to the right connecting both those sunspots. Look at that. You can see it here, right here. It looks like both of these sunspots are communicating with each other. Look at that. Just like that. They're communicating with each other. First time we have ever seen something. This may be new, but I don't think so. I don't think so. So I want to show you. I also want to show you this. Okay. I'm going to enlarge this so you can, I hope you can see this really clearly. This is NASA looking at that at the sun there. The white dot in the center of this is the sun. Look at that red half moon there. That's a solar radiation launched by the sun. Okay. This is after it hit Earth. The red dot that you see there is the Earth. Okay, this red dot right here is the Earth. Okay, this solar flare, the radiation hit the Earth and walked away from the Earth. Walked away from the Earth and kept going out into space. Look over here to this second diagram to the right of there. Okay, look at this. This white center here is also the sun. Look at the effects of the solar radiation. Look at the, the effects of the solar radiation here. Look at that. When it hit the earth, it bent. Our magnetosphere is protecting the earth. The plasma radiation bent over the earth and went around it. Some of the radiation did hit the earth. Some of the radiation did hit the earth, but a lot of it was deflected by the earth's magnetosphere. Okay. I wanted to show you that. Now, do you have any particular questions as to what has happened here?
Does anybody have any questions for me so far? My dear friend Carolyn Martin from sunny Denver is here. Welcome, Carolyn. I appreciate you being here. Carolyn works for an agency in Denver, and I don't believe she's always able to catch our broadcasts here live. We appreciate her as well. Heidi Petrick is here. Thank you. Heidi's asking, will this continue? We believe it will. We believe this will continue. Okay, I want to make it very clear. We believe it will continue. Okay. This will continue probably for the next two or three days. The plasma radiation. Okay, we said that we told you the X X-ray portion of the radiation reached Earth within about a four-hour period last night. The plasma radiation will hit Earth by the 25th. Today is the 23rd, so sometime Monday morning, the plasma radiation will be hitting the Earth, and we will be able to see Aurora Borealis in the northern portions of the Earth. Okay, we're talking probably around the, um, probably in the northern portions like in Canada, Scandinavia, parts of Germany, Switzerland area, Russia, around the north polar regions. Okay, now I want to show you this. Okay, this is the Earth as you can see it and the United States. Just to give you a good idea, the radiation hit the Earth over on the western side of the United States. The radiation first hit the Earth in the daylight portion of the western United States. The lighter blue here is a secondary radiation. Secondary radiation. So you see the secondary radiation hitting in the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, and possibly even up along the coastal regions of Northern California. The rest of California is under the secondary radiation, the X-rays. Look at the darker blue. The darker blue is where the major part of the radi X-ray radiation hit. The darker portions here of the, on this map is where the dark, the most severe X-ray radiation hit. Okay. The secondary radiation hit up in northern Canada. Okay. The greatest portion of the radiation hit in central Washington, the greater part of Oregon, Northern California, Western California, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, lighter radiation hit in Wyoming, portions of Utah, portions of um, portions of uh, New Mexico, down into Arizona, over to the western part of North Dakota, South Dakota, the major part of Nebraska. Then we get down into Oklahoma, or Kansas, Oklahoma, and western Texas. Again, the lighter blue that you see here is secondary radiation, okay? Looking over on the East Coast, you see the yellow there. The yellow areas here did not get the full force of the radiation. But areas of Northern Canada did over here on the East Coast of Canada. Okay, I wanted to show you this because it impacts millions of people. Severe 
X-ray radiation. Like I said, the plasma radiation will hit the Earth on Monday. We believe the plasma radiation will hit the Earth on Monday. Now, that X-ray or X-class solar flare hit last night. I want to show you this. Right before we went on the air, Papua New Guinea had a 7.4 magnitude earthquake. They had a 7.4 magnitude earthquake. It came out as a 7.0. It's now been downgraded to a 6.8. It came out as a 7.0, and now it's been point it's been downgraded to a 6.8. Okay? I want to show you what happened here. I want to show you exactly what happened. Okay? What you first saw is Puerto Rico. We're going to look at Puerto Rico in just a few minutes. Okay. This earthquake that is orange is that earthquake. Okay. USGS is now downgraded to a 6.9. So they raised it from a 6.8 to a 6.9 here. This is one of the islands of Papua New Guinea that is sparsely populated. Sparsely populated. This was a major earthquake. I showed you a 7.4 reading. Now, I believe it was a 7.4. I have reason to believe it is still a 7.4 earthquake. Now, I have looked all around this island. It is very sparsely populated. Okay, up here to the north, there's a small population of people up here. Okay, I'm just going to briefly show you around this island. Okay, I'm just briefly going to show you what's going on here. No matter where people are living here in Papua New Guinea, they felt this quake. They felt this quake. Over on the northern part of the island right here, there's another sparse population here along the coastline and another one right here. The co This coastline and right over here is another very sparsely knit community here, okay? But it's mostly along the coastline of Papua New Guinea here. Okay, you can pretty much see it. Now, you might wonder why I'm showing you this. Sparsely populated people here do not have what we have in the modern world. They do not have the houses that we have here. Their houses are not seismically built to withstand a major earthquake. And what I'm now showing you is over here on the western side of Papua New Guinea here. Okay. These people also felt the brunt of that 7.4 earthquake. Regardless of where that earthquake hit, what the epicenter was, these areas of population still felt that earthquake. Okay. Right up here, there's only a couple people living over here. Okay. Then there's a community right here. It's very, very sparse populated. I'm going to bring you back to where that earthquake hit. right over here. 
I believe this is not the 6.9 that they're saying it is. I believe it is at least a 7.4 earthquake. Just about 30 minutes ago, USGS was still calling it a 7.0. Then they began their downgrade. They're also showing a 5.1 large earthquake here as well. Now, given that, this 5.0 is an aftershock, and I do not believe it is the only aftershock that's here. By now, there's at least a dozen aftershocks, okay? There's at least a dozen aftershocks. When the Earth reels like it has today, it moves, and it moves in a great area, even on this island. Now, I don't know how long this island is, but populations here on this island felt that quake. There's no doubt in my mind that they felt that quake. The earth did move. Now, I want to go over here to the east. This is another earthquake. This is another 5.0 earthquake near Lakatoro, Lakatoro in Vanuatu. 61 kilometers east of Lakatoro, Vanuatu. Okay, another 5.0 earthquake. USGS is not showing anything happening in Fiji, Tonga, or Samoa here. They're not showing any earthquakes at all over here in the Kermadec Islands north of New Zealand. They're not showing any of the earthquakes in New Zealand as well. And yet they have had two 4.5 earthquakes. Two 4.5 earthquakes. I will address that again in a few minutes. Okay? We can go west. Okay? I'm coming over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm coming over here into northern Indonesia, southern Philippines. This is Pondagaitan, Philippines on the northern end of Indonesia, southern end of the Philippines. This is a 4.3 here. We go over here just southeast of Mindanao, Philippines. This is a moderate earthquake here, but this is 547 kilometers deep. This is a pretty deep earthquake. As a result of that, this earthquake being deep as it is, is going to spawn another 5.3 large earthquake. That 5.3 large earthquake may happen over here on Mindanao, Philippines. It could go south into Indonesia. It could go further west into Indonesia or even over to Thailand, um, which I say Cambodia, Vietnam, Myanmar area. But another 5.3 large earthquake is going to happen as a result of this 4.0 moderate quake just to the southeast of Mindanao, Philippines. Over here in Pondagaitan, Philippines, this was only 105 kilometers deep. Okay. But what they're also not showing you is off the northeast coast of Mindanao, Philippines. They're still having aftershocks of the 9.0 earthquake that hit here just four and a half, five months ago. Okay? It's still going on. Those will happen for a very long time. We come down here to Sumatra, Indonesia. We have a couple earthquakes down here that I want to show you. Over off the southwestern coastline of Sumatra, we have another 5.3 earthquake. This is 61 kilometers deep. Just west of there, out here in the Indian Ocean, we have another 4.6 earthquake. This is off the coast of Benkulu, Indonesia. Okay? Now, I have some more information to, for you. 
right over here in eastern Java, Indonesia. We have had another volcano erupt. Semeru volcano has erupted. And it's throwing lava high into the air, number one. And it's also throwing lava down the slope of Semeru volcano. Semeru volcano erupts at least once a month. That's what's going on over here in eastern Java, Indonesia today. Semeru volcano is erupting. Okay. Lava is flowing down the sides of Semeru volcano. People are asked to say to stay many miles away from the volcano. Many, many miles away from the volcano. Okay. Rob 52 says USBS not showing any kind of earthquake. Yeah, you're right. Hurricane Heather says, why am I the only one that saw all of those? That's also another good question. Okay. Why are you the only one that saw those? I don't think you're the only one that saw those. You're the only one reporting those. That's what has actually happened. You're the only one reporting those. Sleeping Volcano says, I'm monitoring volcanoes and quakes. I've been busy. I can only appreciate that. Okay. I've been monitoring the volcanoes. I've been monitoring the sun. I've been monitoring the earthquakes all over the place. Hurricane Heather says, please don't hike on any erupting volcano. I totally agree. For those of you that have been watching me for a long time, you heard me reporting on an earth, or a non earthquake, a erupting volcano over in central Sem um, Sumatra, Indonesia. There were six hikers on that volcano when it erupted. Marapi volcano, M A R A P I volcano. One person was killed when a great, big, huge, red hot. Lava rock came flying out of the summit of the volcano, hitting that person, instantly burning and killing that person. Five other people had to be pulled off the mountain by rescue teams. Please don't get near any volcano where you feel rumbling beneath your feet. Stay away from it. Run away from it. Okay? Okay. Run away from that crazy volcano. Don't go up it. If you hear this might erupt, stay away from it. Polly says can't, she's driving, she can't chat here. I agree. Please don't ever, don't anybody ever drive and chat at the same time. It might kill you. It will definitely hurt somebody else. Okay. I'm just saying, I've seen it happen. Sleeping Volcano says they have a death wish. They're idiots. Oh, yeah, absolutely are. Please don't do that. It's not good for your health or anybody else's. Okay? It's insane. That's what it is. It's insane. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Plain and simple. I would not wish that on anyone. Period. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you some more earthquakes. I'm going to show you some more earthquakes. The Europeans are only showing the 7.4 and the 5.1 earthquake over there in Papua New Guinea. I'm kind of surprised because the European agency usually shows more earthquakes. And I am almost dead sure that there are at least a half dozen aftershocks since or from the time that that earthquake hit in Papua New Guinea till now. I'm dead sure of that. 
I don't really care what anybody says. I've seen it happen. These earthquakes happen. United States Geological Survey is also not showing an earthquake over in southwestern Australia. This is a 2.8 earthquake in southwestern Australia today. Well, that is a minor earthquake slash small earthquake, a 2.8 earthquake, it's still real. It is very real. Okay? I can't tell you much more than that. Look at the earthquakes in Indonesia today. Look at all of them. And USBS wants us to believe that nothing ever happens. There's only a couple, three earthquakes in Indonesia today. Look at all those. That's insanity. That is utter insanity. Like I said, off the northeast coast of Mindanao, Philippines, we have three earthquakes here. We've been having three earthquakes off the northeast coast for a long time. This one is a 4.1 moderate quake, an aftershock of a 9.0 earthquake just about four and a half, five months ago. There's also a 3.8 and a, another 3.0. A 3.8 and a 3.0 right there. Okay. These earthquakes off the northeast coast of Mindanao, Philippines are going to continue. They're going to continue for probably not just months, but years. Whenever you have a major earthquake like that, those aftershocks continue for a very long time. Okay? It's happening. It's happening everywhere. Further north in the Philippines, Homahan Island, Philippines, a 3.3. And over here in Albera, Philippines, a 3.4. Central Philippines, okay? Going over to Luzon, Philippines. They've been talking about at least one earthquake every day over here at Luzon, Philippines. This is the northernmost island of the Philippines. The one over on the southeastern side of Luzon is a 3.2. These other earthquakes over here on the northwestern side are 3.3 and a 3.0. 3.3 and a 3.0 here. Now, my son served a mission for his church over here near Kauaian, Kauaian, Philippines. Okay? Earthquakes happen here every day. Every day around Luzon, Philippines. Now, I also want to go over here to Japan, to Western Japan. Earthquakes are continuing hitting here over Nato Peninsula here, the Sea of Japan. There they had an 8.4 major earthquake just about four months ago, okay? Today a 2.0, 2.4, and a 2.0. Two 2.0s and a 2.4 earthquake here in Nato Philippines. The major earthquake killed 300 plus people and injured probably close to 500 people there in the western part of Japan. Over on the eastern shore of Japan, near Han Honshu, Japan, near Tokyo, Ichihara, Shiba, Japan, a 3.3 earthquake. And folks, not not just that, 3.3 and also another 2.9, 3, 3.0 earthquake. We had a 5.3 earthquake over here near Tokyo, just north of Tokyo, Japan, earlier this week. Okay, the earth, earthquake that hit, I'm trying to get this map to resolve to show you where it hit. It hit in a very populated area of Japan, just north of Tokyo, a 5.3. They're still having aftershocks there today. Okay, I wanted to make sure we showed you that.
That's important information. People in Japan sometimes get in here to our chat, and I want to make sure that they know that we are covering it. We are watching them. We want to make sure they're still protected. Kathy Payne is here saying when there are solar activities, it causes earth movement. 789 Japan, Chile, Indonesia, each had a major CME three days ago. You're right. You're right. And they will continue to have earthquakes. They will continue to have earthquakes. Now, I want to show you this in Alaska. I'm going north into Alaska. Over here into the hand of Alaska. This is a 3.2 earthquake over here. 3.2 magnitude earthquake. This is near White Mountain, Alaska. White Mountain, Alaska. Next, I'm going to take you up into the polar regions of Alaska. This is the Arctic Circle here. Notice we have an earthquake there. This is a 2.6. This is a 2.6 earthquake near um, Camp Alaska. Okay. Arctic Village, Alaska, a 2.6 earthquake. Okay. This just happened. Okay. 4.21 p.m. Eastern Time today. Okay. Is it related to the solar flare? I believe it is. Okay. Trevor Harper is saying tsunami warnings in Papua, Indonesia. Papua, New Guinea, I should say. Not Papua, Indonesia, Papua, New Guinea. I'm going over here into the tsunami warning center here to pull up that information. NCWQ Worldwide News and Disasters Explorer says there are none. No, there is no tsunami warning. I just pulled it up here. There is no tsunami warning. NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration um, Tsunami Warning Center has no tsunamis at all. No tsunamis at all. Okay. I want to make sure everybody realizes that. Sorry about that. There are no tsunamis. Okay. Plain and simple. I've got all the information right here. Um, each individual area region is covered here. Okay. There are no tsunami warnings at all, okay? Tsunami information statement number one from the National Weather Service National Tsunami Warning Center, Palmer, Alaska. This is a tsunami information statement for Alaska, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and California. There is no tsunami danger for the West U.S. West Coast, British Columbia, or Alaska. Now, this happens. Okay, this does happen. Okay, it can happen anytime we have a, anything over a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. I want to make that point perfectly clear. It does happen. Not this time. Not this time. Now I'm going to pull the information for south of there right now. I'm going over to America, Samoa, Tonga area. Tsunami information statement number one, Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, Honolulu, Hawaii. No tsunami threat from a distant earthquake. An earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 7.0 occurred in New Guinea, Papua New Guinea region at 9.22 a.m. Papua New Guinea time on Saturday, March 23rd. Based on available data, there 
is no tsunami threat to Samoa or Tonga, Fiji, the Loyalty Islands, and the Solomon Islands. There is no tsunami threat in this area, this region today. Okay, so we've covered that. Anyway, let's keep going here. I'm, I'm glad you guys brought it up, but I've taken care of that. There is no tsunami threat at all. Please understand that. I looked at it earlier. They did not have any data. We checked the data now, and there is no tsunami threat at all. Now, I want to go down to the Philippines, okay? The reason I want to show you, the, or not the Philippines, we talked about the Philippines. I want to go down to New Zealand, okay? USBS hardly ever says anything about New Zealand. North of New Zealand out here, we have a 3.57 earthquake here. It's out in the Southern Pacific here, okay? We go north over to uh, that same area, and I'm going from north to south. This is a 3.81 earthquake there, okay? Let's go south. Then we go to a 2.71. Now, I'm going to tell you what these earthquakes are, but I'm not going to show them to you necessarily unless there's a large earthquake. A 2.23, and this is in the catcher's mitt, okay? This is in the catcher's mitt of the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand. A 2.23 and a 2.50 and a 2.74. Going inland, okay? We're going south into the North Island. The North Island of New Zealand, New Zealand is called Raoul Island, okay? 2.47 a 2.21, and further south, just on the northern reaches of Topo Volcano. The northern reaches of Topo Volcano. This is a 3.0 earthquake. Topo Volcano is right here, okay? Let me get my pointer here. Okay, this is just north of Topo Volcano. This lake here is a volcano. It's called Topo Lake. It's a super volcano. It's a super volcano. And for there to be a 3.0 small earthquake there, it's probably related to this volcano right here. Okay, then Rapahu Volcano is right here. Rapahu Volcano usually erupts about every five years. All right. Let's go to the west. Almost directly west from Rapahu, we have a 3.91 earthquake right there. Okay, near the western shore of Raoul Island. Over into the Cook, Cook Strait here. The Cook Strait is the body of water between the North and South Island over here in New Zealand. Here's a 2.58 magnitude earthquake. Let's take a look at this one that's just barely on the sh northern shore of the South Island here. Doggone, come up. This is a 2.50 here over on the northwestern shore of the South Island. Okay. Usually that's all that ever happens here. Going over to the western shore here, We have a 3.54 earthquake here. Okay. Then we go south here over to the southeastern part of the island, and we don't usually see earthquakes here. This earthquake here is a 2.8 near Berwick Forest, Otago, New Zealand. Okay. Right there. That's a 2.80 earthquake right? We do have earthquakes in New Zealand, regardless of what USBS says. Okay, rarely do they ever show any earthquakes. Rarely. We go over to Hawaii. 
Okay, we have many of you who live in Hawaii, including Kathy Paena. We have Laura Marie living that has family living over there in Pahala, Hawaii. Okay, I want to show you where the earthquakes are today. There's only three earthquakes down here in southern Pahala, Hawaii. This is where her family lives, okay? 3.06 and a 2.1. 3.06 and a 2.1. Then we go further north, still in Pahala, Hawaii, okay? Doggone it, it's not showing me that earthquake. Dad gummit. Now I got it. This is a 1.91, 2.0 earthquake. Okay. This is still in Pahala, Hawaii. Okay. Then we go just south of Kilauea. Okay. South of Kilauea. We have several earthquakes here. We have three over near Kilauea right there and one just south of there. Let's show you this earthquake here. This is a 1.73. Let's take a look at these three earthquakes at Kilauea. Okay. I want to show you that. Come on. It's having issues showing me these earthquakes. I don't know why it's doing that. There's a one nine. There's one 1 1.9, there's a 2.0, and a 2.3 here. I looked at it earlier. They just don't want to let me show it to you. These are all at Kilauea Volcano, okay? This is called Howley Mau Mau Crater, and Kilauea Volcano is inside Howley Mau Mau Crater, okay? Also, over just south of Kilauea, this is over here in Fern Forest, okay? This is a 1.19, this is a 1.95. Why does it do that? Dad gummit. It's a 1.95 magnitude tremor, okay? Nearly a 2.0 earthquake there, all right? That's what's going on there. However, guess what's happening over on the western side? Okay. This is over on the southwestern flank of Mauna Loa. Okay. This is a 1.75 magnitude tremor. Right near the coastline on the western side, southwestern side of the big island. Okay. Kathy Payne says, I live in a volcano on Oahu on the whole west side. She probably lives over at Hualalai Volcano, okay? That's the volcano over on the western side of the Big Island, okay? Now, we have earthquakes hitting all over the United States, okay? Literally all over the United States. 25 earthquakes, 25 earthquakes have hit over here North of, um, north of the um, San Francisco Bay Area. We have more earthquakes in this area. A lot more earthquakes. Okay. Now, north of there over in Ferndale, California. Again, this is in the Cascadia Subduction Zone region here. These three earthquakes right here. Okay. Two on land. One is near Shasta Lake. One is near Shasta Lake. It is a 1.92, 2.0 earthquake right there. Okay, Shasta Lake. West of there, Willow Creek, California is a 2.08. And... This earthquake just off the coast of in Ferndale, or off the coast of Ferndale, is a 1.952.0 2.0 earthquake right there in the southern Cascadia subduction zone. Over here in the geysers, we have about 28 tremors and earthquakes here in the geysers area. This is Sonoma Valley, California. 
That's typical for what we see there. Typical for what we see in the geysers, California, because that is where man has drilled into the upper magma chambers, of the Clear Lake volcano to obtain steam to power turbines over in Sonoma County in the hills there. And those drill points, those holes in the ground that men have dug attract seismic energy and naturally we get earthquakes there. That is why we see 20 plus earthquakes over here in the geysers region today. Okay. San Francisco. San Francisco at the entrance to the bay on the San Andreas Fault. A 1.76 earthquake, San Francisco Zoo. 1.76 tremor at San Francisco Zoo today. Okay. Over on the eastern side of San Francisco Bay, the Hayward Fault. Dublin, California, 1.17 here. This is on the Hayward Fault here. We go south here. This is Livermore. This is a 1.09 in Livermore. We go south from there. Alum Rock. Again, these are on the Hayward, Hayward Fault. Okay. That's a 1.75 quake there. And south of there, Morgan Hill, we have a 2.44 minor earthquake. Morgan Hill, California. Okay. Then we come over here to Monterey Bay, right here. Just east of Monterey Bay. Guess what we have there? Okay. Ridgemore, California. We've been seeing quite a few tremors and microquakes all over this area. This is a 0 0.66 microquake. Here, the pinnacles. This is an oil and gas region of California here along the San Andreas Fault. We do get earthquakes here. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Don't want to sneeze in anybody's ear. The pinnacles, 1.91, 1.65, 1.87, and a 1.05. All of these are tremors at the pinnacles. All those are tremors at the pinnacles. It continues. San Simeon, guess what? We continue to see tremors and earthquakes at San Simeon. Today, 1.65 magnitude tremor here in San Simeon, California. Okay, it's rocking. It's rocking. Now, we don't see any other earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault until we get down to Fraser, Fraser Gorman, California. This is where the Garlot Fault goes up to the northeast here over towards um, Ridgecrest. Down here in Gorman, Fraser area, we have a 2.0 minor earthquake. 2.0 minor earthquake. Up near Boatfish, California, 1.24 and a 1.0 tremor. Boatfish, California is a volcanic area. That's why it's getting hit. Again, all of the volcanoes are recharging. All of the volcanoes are recharging. Okay, that's why that earthquake hit. Going north, Kozo Junction. For those of you that know what Kozo Junction is, we have a 0 0.6 microquake in Kozo Junction today. Now, for those of you that don't know what Kozo Junction is, Kozo Junction is where the Kozo Volcano is. Right there. Kozo Junction is not just Kozo Junction, though. I want to tell you this. It's Kozal Volcanic Field. This Kozal Volcanic Field spans about 20 square miles out here. The only thing out there is a geothermal station, just like we have over at the salt, south of the Salton Sea, and over in um, Nevada, just north of Reno, okay? Nevada, north of Reno, and over at the geysers. 
and there are many other um, fields just like the Kosovo volcanic area. Okay, that whole area is chock full of craters and volcanic cones. Craters and volcanic cones. Now I'm going to try to zoom in here. The last time I was on the air, I was able to locate where some of those um, I was able to locate where some of those um, gosh, where are they now? My map's not showing me what I saw the other day, what I showed you guys the other day. I actually showed you the areas where the um, steam comes from the upper magma chamber of the volcano, and it's fed over to those great big huge um, boilers, basically, that spin and generate electricity from the steam from the volcano and transfer it over to great big huge uh, power cables, throwing power to Nevada and over into California, okay? I want to show you this, and I may still be able to find it because they are all over this area if I'm just able to see this here. Bingo. Right there. Oh, darn it. Right there. Okay. Why is that doing that? Doggone device. Okay. Right here. Just like over it, the geysers, just like the area south of the Sultan Sea, we have these boilers that spin from the steam to gener generate electricity. In this case, over at Kozo Volcano, Kozo Volcanic Field, this geothermal system has 46 of these big machines out there to generate electricity. They have them all over the Kozo Volcanic region. Okay? Huge, huge area. Huge area. And I'm glad I was able to find that to show that to you. Christine is here saying, Ron, can, can I tell the people about the plasma being released by the Earth's atmosphere, consciousness, and surface? Yes, you can. Now, what is she talking about? I just dropped my device. Just briefly, the plasma radiation comes through the magnetosphere, comes out of the sun, goes through our magnetosphere. Then it comes down here to the surface of the earth. Each of our bodies is about 80% water. Our bodies are about 80% water. When that plasma radiation hits the earth's surface, Usually, it heats it, no, not just usually, all the time, it heats up the Earth's plates. The Earth's earthquake faults. And as a result, we get those earthquakes. Okay? It heats that heat from the plasma radiation and the electromagnetic radiation we get from planetary alignments heats up all the gunk and grime that's holding the plates in place, the biological material that's down on the down on the surface of the sea, the underside of the sea, um, at the bottom of the sea, all that gunk and grime, the biological material, the dirt, sand, and everything, that plasma radiation heats that stuff up, allowing the plates to more freely move, as well as the earthquake faults. That's what's going on down in Papua New Guinea, in that area. The southern part of the Pacific Ocean is one great big huge um, subduction region. Subduction means the plates are subducting under each other. Seven different plates subducting under each other every day. 
That's why we get so many earthquakes in Papua New Guinea, Tongan Islands, Fiji Islands, Samoa, and even down over to New Zealand, Australia, that whole area of Indonesia. It's one great big huge subduction zone, but guess what? That plasma radiation also heats up our bodies. It has unusual effects on our minds, unusual effects on our physical bodies. People that have emotional problems, it activates that. Whether they even have emotional problems or not, it causes it. That causes that. I remember when I was a police officer, I hated when there was a full moon. Because of the full moon, it affected people here on Earth. It does. Just like the plasma radiation does to people here on Earth as well. Back then, I didn't even equate it necessarily to um, the plasma radiation from the solar, from the sun, from the solar disk. I didn't even equate it to that. It did happen. I saw it happen. Okay. I saw it happen many times. Okay. Please, please be aware of that. Please be aware of that. It can hurt each and every one of us. If you feel like you need help, get help. Get members of your family, your husband, your wife, or whoever it is to get help for you. Or maybe they can help you. Families can help each other. And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Anyway, be aware of it. Be aware of it. This might help you. It could help you. Okay? Christine, I'm glad you brought that up. That's very, very good information. Okay? Anyway, do you guys have any questions about any of this? I know we've covered a lot since we came on the air. I didn't mean for this to turn into a huge earthquake fest. We talk about all kinds of things here on this channel. Okay. All kinds of things. Um, over in the Imperial Valley right here. Okay. Most of the earthquakes are hitting over here in the Anza Gap area. Anza Brego Desert area right here. All kinds of earthquakes. It says 10 plus earthquakes. There are about 14 earthquakes here in the Anza Gap area, northeast San Diego County. Okay. Off the coast of San Diego, south of San Diego, Rosarito Beach, Mexico. Rosarito Beach, Mexico, off the coast, we have a 2.0 earthquake. 1.9 tremor, 2.0 earthquake, just off the coast of Rosarito Beach, Mexico, Baja, California. I've been in Rosarito Beach many times. Spent a great deal of time down there. Down in the Gulf of California, the northern Gulf of California, we have a 3.6, 3.6 earthquake. This is just northwest of San Felipe, Cal um, Baja, California. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry, it's southeast of San Felipe. Southeast of San Felipe, 3.6 earthquake. This is on the San Andreas Fault here. The San Andreas Fault runs from way up in Northern California, like we showed you, all the way down here, including not just through the Gulf of California here, but continuing off the southern coast of Mexico, southwestern coast of Mexico. It's happening, okay, all over. Now, over in Texas, Hilton, Texas, a 2.66. We're also seeing earthquakes over in southwestern Texas here. Okay, this is happening. These are 2.0, 3.0 earthquakes and also tremors, southwestern Texas. Toya, Texas, um, Coyanosa, Texas, Midland, Texas, in that area. Hilton, Hilton Oklahoma, a 2.6 six magnitude earthquake there in Hilton, Southern Oklahoma. Also over there, 1.6 in, in uh, Morrison 
and Sequoia, Oklahoma at 2.89. All these earthquakes are in oil and gas producing areas. They're over in the oil fields. These are oil and gas uh, fracking operations. Those earthquakes are because of oil and gas fracking operations. Okay. Unreal. Unreal. Now, I'm going to go over to Central America. I want to show you this. Look at this. USGS shows no earthquakes. Guess what? All kinds of earthquakes over there in Central America. All kinds of earthquakes. Why are they not showing that? Why are they not showing that? USGS, give me a call. You have my telephone number. You have my email address. Drop me a line. Explain to me why you don't talk about it. Mexico, look at this. 42 earthquakes in southern Mexico. 42 earthquakes in southern Mexico. USGS says zero. Not a thing. Not a darn thing. Let's go over to Puerto Rico. Let's go over to Puerto Rico. Okay. I want to show you this. Okay. Guanica, Puerto Rico, where my buddy uh, Dominic lives. This is a 1.83 tremor here. 2.0 earthquakes and one eight point eight point. I'm sorry, a 1.93. I'm sorry, that was a 1.93 earthquake in Guanica, Puerto Rico. Okay. All of these earthquakes here, darn it, why is it playing games with me? All of the earthquakes down here in southwestern Puerto Rico are a result of two 8.0 and an 8.4 earthquake that hit on December 26th and December 28th, 2019. We're still seeing aftershocks from those earthquakes here. They caused damage, they killed people, they leveled homes and buildings all over southwestern Puerto Rico. Yet, that's what man did. Yes, the government the U.S. government and other governments are responsible for that. Northwest of Puerto Rico, we have three earthquakes. We have a 3.0, a 3.0, and a 3.1 off the northwest side of Puerto Rico here. Two, two 3.0s and a 3.1 right here. Okay? That's not all, folks. There's more. Central Puerto Rico, here's a 3.6. Now, I do not think that any of these other earthquakes are a result of the 8.0 and 8.4 earthquake in December 2019. These are something else, okay? There is a volcano over here on Puerto Rico. There is a volcano here in Puerto Rico. Over in the islands northeast, of Puerto Rico. Okay? We're having earthquakes. We're having earthquakes. Here is a 3.2 near Calibra, Puerto Rico. 3.2. North of there, way north, probably 300 some miles north of Puerto Rico here is 3.21. This earthquake was dropped from this earthquake fault here. Okay? This earthquake fault dropped that earthquake. That earthquake fault comes all the way from over in west in Guatemala and goes all the way through the Caribbean. Okay? It goes south of the Cayman Islands. It continues eastbound north of Jamaica. It skirts the southern coast of, Qua of Cuba and continues north of, continues east, but north of um, the, the Dominican Republic here and continues east north of Puerto Rico. That's why we have these earthquakes. 
these earthquakes down in southwestern Puerto Rico are not a result of this earthquake fault here. These are earthquakes from that 8.4 and 8.0 earthquake that happened in 2019. Okay. Then it goes north. It continues east, but north of the British and U.S. Virgin Islands here. Then once it passes there, it continues south east of the Leeward Islands here. And it continues south until it gets down here near Venezuela. Then it turns west and goes over into Venezuela right here. Okay? Yes, we've seen 5.0 earthquakes here near Grenada and in Venezuela zone, the Cayman Ridge. The Cayman Ridge. It happens. Now, South America, look at this. USGS is not showing any earthquakes here. There are about 30 earthquakes here in South America on the west coast of South America. Chile, up here in Peru, and up here in Colombia. But USGS doesn't say word one about it. Why not, USGS? Why don't you say it? Up along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the Atlantic, in the Atlantic Ocean, we have a 5.0 earthquake over here in the North Mid-Atlantic. 4.95, 5.0 earthquake right here. We go north. The Azores Islands... The Azores Islands, right near the Mid-Atlantic Fault, we have a 1.50. And we also have three earthquakes over here in the Canary Islands. Now, those three earthquakes are just minor earthquakes in the Canary Islands. Just minor earthquakes. Okay? Now, I told you all about Iceland. The fissure is still erupting over in Iceland. There are five different cones and craters over along the fissure now. The volcano, the lava has erupted and continues fountaining out of those craters. Okay, that's continuing to happen. The authorities there are rebuilding the earthen protective walls around Grindavik, the Svartsangi power plant, and the Blue Lagoon. They're doing a good job. So far, there's very little other lava coming out to Sir Stronderbeger Highway just north of Greenbeck. Okay? It's only 200 to 300 meters away from the, the main road there. It's not likely to pass that roadway. They have built a great big, huge earthen wall. So far, it hasn't even reached that yet. Okay? So that area is safe. Okay, that area is somewhat safe. Now, with that said, north of Greenbeck, and this is, this is in the area where the volcano is erupting. This is Hagafell. This is Hagafell. This is a volcano over there near where it's erupting. Okay, Hagafell today has a 2.2 magnitude earthquake. A 2.2 magnitude earthquake near Hagafell volcano, Hagafell volcano over there in Iceland. Okay. It's not the only one. One other earthquake over on the north side of Iceland. Now I cannot even pronounce this the name of this town. There's a 2.0 earthquake over here on the north side of Iceland. Okay. This is European agency that's telling us this. Now, what, my, what did I say? Earthquakes over here in the Canary Islands. Okay, right here. We have an earthquake here. This is near La Orotava, Canary Islands, Spain here. This is a 1.5 tremor. All of these earthquakes here are all tremors here in the Canary Islands. So they're getting hit too. Why? Every one of these islands has a volcano. That's why. All of the volcanoes are recharging. 
That's why we're seeing earthquakes here. Okay. Now, La Palma Island. A couple of years ago, we were talking about La Palma Island because Cumbre Vieja volcano was erupting. But it wasn't erupting here where the main volcano is. It was erupting here on the spine of, of um, La Palma Island. Cumbre Vieja volcano lasted about six months. It erupted all over this area. Today, there's no earthquakes there. None. Nothing's going on there. I believe that the magma plume has gone south. I be, believe that the magma plume has gone south away from Cumbre, Cumbre Vieja, La Palma Island. Okay? But that doesn't mean that the magma plume has left the entire area. That's why we're getting hit with earthquakes over in the Canary Islands there. Okay? Over in Spain and Portugal. Look at this. Three earthquakes in the Azor Islands here. One earthquake on the eastern side of the Strait of Gibraltar. Okay? There's a fault zone here. Come on. There's a fault zone here. A 2.4 earthquake on that fault zone. That same fault zone also belongs over in the Turkey-Syria border region. That's where that fault zone originates. Okay? But, but, over here in the Strait of Gibraltar area, the Azor Islands over here, we have a 2.6, a 2.4, and another 2.6. 2.6 here, 2.4, 2.6 here. Okay? Portugal, north of there. Here we have a 2.0 in Portugal right there. Southern Spain. Hmm. Southern Spain. A couple earthquakes there, 1.6 and 1.7. Okay? Earthquakes. It's happening all over. It's literally happening all over, guys. Just off the eastern coast of Spain, the Riviera, a 2.1 earthquake here. At the border region of Spain and France, we have another earthquake. Guess what? Those are just tremors. A 1.9 and a 1.8 tremor right there in the border region of France and Spain. Okay? North of there, this is in France. There is a 2.7 earthquake there. Over at the Riviera of Spain. Okay? Now, I can't pronounce where this earthquake is. I'm just going to show it to you. We have a 2.5 earthquake right there. Okay? Okay? Now, I'm going to try to show you the name of that, that town. There is the name of the town. You probably can't even tell what that is. You know, it's like a 20-letter name. There's no way I speak French, and I can't pronounce that. I can't. There are no earthquakes in England at all. Okay? Scandinavia. This is the first for a very long time. There have been earthquakes over here in northern, or excuse me, not northern, southern Sweden and Norway. Today, there are no earthquakes anywhere. There have been earthquakes over here in Norland, Sweden, and over here in northern uh, Norway as well. But today, there are no earthquakes at all in Scandinavia. Nothing over here in Finland either. Not a thing. They got lucky. They got very lucky. However, we go over here to the Alps. We go over here to the Alps, okay? Over here to the north. We have four earthquakes on the north of France over there. And it's not letting me show, show you those earthquakes, but those are just minor earthquakes here. There's nothing but minor earthquakes over here in France and over here in northern uh, Italy here. And again, you see 20 earthquakes over here in central, it, central Italy here. Tuscany area. Okay? Tuscany area. Folks, 
we have 20 plus earthquakes. We're going to get a 5.0 or larger earthquake over here. Anytime we're over here in Italy, anytime we see swarms of earthquakes, usually that means there's a larger earthquake coming. And that's exactly what that means. Over here in the southern part of Italy, we have some earthquakes here and over in, in uh, Sicily as well. We have 1.8, Campania, Italy, Basilicata, Italy, 2.0, and 1.0 there. Okay? Further south, into the toe of Italy, okay? 0 0.8 and a 1.5 in Cabrilla, or Cabria, Italy here. Okay? Just in the, I'm sorry, right here. Just in the toe of the boot here. Okay? Now we get over into Sicily, just off the coast of Italy and Sicily, over near Mount Etna and Stromboli volcanoes. Off the coast, a 2.2 earthquake right here. A 2.2 earthquake right there. Just south of there, and this one is over on the coastline of Sicily, a 1.3 right there. Over on Sicily itself, we have a... 1.7. Okay. In the Mediterranean Ocean east of Sicily, we have a 2.3. That area is getting hit. Linda Covington says it's Saturday. What gives? Linda, I first started talking about the X class flare from the sun. Then I wanted to show the earthquakes that happened as a result of that X-class flare and other M-class flares coming from that same sunspot and a sunspot just south of there. And we've had a 7.0 earthquake that I believe was at least a 7.4 earthquake in Papua New Guinea. That's why we're here. Okay, I wanted to make sure we were talking about what's going on. I believe it is very important, okay? Montenegro is still getting hit. Let me show you this. Montenegro is still getting hit with a 2.5 earthquake there, minor earthquake, Montenegro. Now, there's more earthquakes than that. Way to the northeast in Romania, a 2.4 earthquake up here. Then we go south here. Okay, Bulgaria, a 2.1 and a 3.2 in Bulgaria. Earthquakes, okay, USGS not showing any of those, nothing. I told you about earthquakes hitting in Greece, look at this. Over here to the west, these are 2.5, 3.2 earthquakes over here. Over here, these are also 2.5, 2.4 earthquakes here. Up here, these are ones. These are 1.0, 1.5, 1.9 earthquakes. Tremors. Tremors. But these are in Greece. And USGS is not saying word one about it. Not a darn thing. Petrus, Greece. Petrus, Greece. We've got a 0 0.8 and a 1.4 tremors over here in Petrus, Greece. I want to show you this. Petrus, Greece, named after the Apostle Peter. Okay? Tremors there. Okay? East of there. Also in Greece. Okay? There are six earthquakes here. These are all ones. These are all 1.1, 1.9, 1.8, 1.6, 1.7, .1 okay? Still in Greece. It's not over. There's more. That's over on the north side of the Aegean Sea that separates southern Greece, Greece from northern Greece, okay? Over on the south side of Greece, this is a 1.9, 2.0 earthquake here, Okay? Then we go over to Crete, okay? Two earthquakes off the southern shore of Crete. One is a 2.0, and this other here is a 2.2. 2.2 2 
2.0, 2.2 earthquake here. Let's look over here, okay? Just to the north side of Greece, a 2.6 and a 2.1. 2.6 and a 2.1 right here, north of Crete. This is the Mediterranean Sea, okay? Again, the Antolian Fault Zone runs south of Crete, okay? This Anton Antolian Fault Zone runs south of Crete, coming out of the Turkey-Syria border region, okay? A lot of earthquakes. Look at all these earthquakes in western Turkey. These are mostly all twos. 2.1, 2.6, 2.9 earthquakes all over western Turkey. Okay? All over the place. Literally. Okay? For example, here. This is the Dokanese Islands. These islands belong to Greece. This is a 2.0 earthquake here. Okay? Anyway, then let's go over to eastern Turkey. Again, the Syria-Turkey area, okay? There's at least 30 earthquakes right in this area here. The Syria-Turkey border region. The, the Anatolian fault zone here. Look at that. Okay? Now, these are mostly twos and 1.7, 1.6 kind of earthquakes, tremors. But they're still hitting. They're still hitting. 1.2, 1, 2.6, 1 1.6, 2.1, okay? Now, let me show you this. There's a 2.1 there. Like I said, there's mostly ones and twos there. Those are a result aftershocks of the 9.0, 10.0 earthquake that hit here last year. Hit right, right here in the Syria border, Syria Turkey border region. And those people are still trying to recover. USGS still not saying one word about it. Not a word. Okay. Now, I'm going over here into the eight into the Red Sea. Okay. This is over in Saudi Arabia. We have a 4.4 earthquake over here in the Red Sea. It's right along this earthquake fault here, okay? Yes, we do get a lot of earthquakes in this region, okay? I'm almost done, guys. Please hang in here with me for a few more minutes. The agency got hit. Over in southern Iran, here's a 4.6 earthquake. Southern Iran. Going over here to southwestern China and Russia over here, Tajikistan. This is a 3.9, 4.0 earthquake there. We have two other earthquakes here in this region, a 4.1 Afghanistan and a 3.7, okay? Earthquakes there in Tajikistan and Afghanistan. North of there, China. Here's another 5.0 earthquake in China, okay? Then we go to South Central China. This is another 3.5 earthquake here, right? Now, like I said, we covered Indonesia here. Look at all these earthquakes in Indonesia. They're still happening. USGS says nothing. Not a darn thing. 5.0 earthquake over here in Benklu, Indonesia. Southern Sumatra, 5.3 earthquake there. USGS says nothing. Why not? Actually, they did say, I'm sorry, they did say that. They did mention that earthquake, okay? They did mention that earthquake over in Papua New Guinea. Over there, we had a 7.0 and a 5.1. A 7.0, I believe, was a 7.4 earthquake in Papua New Guinea and a 5.1 aftershock. Now, folks, we don't have anything to prove it necessarily, 
because this is a European agency giving us this information. USGS is also reporting the same thing. But we know darn well the agencies are not telling the truth. Okay? They're not telling the truth. Now, I've covered most of the world. Please understand I've covered most of the world. I've tried to give you the information. A lot of these larger and major earthquakes are a result of that X.1 uh, major solar flare on the center of the sun late last night. They're going to continue. I promise you they're going to continue. Now, later after this broadcast is over, I have a new post office box. Okay? After March 31st, we'll no longer get mail over in Valdez, North Carolina. I have a new post office box here in Morganton, North Carolina. I'm going to give you the address. I published it last night in our program description just below our, our uh, video. Within 15 minutes after this video is completed and posted over here on YouTube, I will be posting this, email, this uh, post office box here in Morganton. The address is 105 North Green Street. One zero, I'm sorry, not 105, 104, 104 North Green Street, Box 105, Morganton, M-O-R-G-A-N-T-O-N, North Carolina, Morganton, North Carolina, zip code is 28655, 104 North Green Street, Box 105, Morganton, North Carolina, 28655. Please know that. Okay? Like I said, I will publish it in the top of our program description after we get off the air today. Also, please note, you'll see two PayPal addresses. Do not put anything in the Venmo. Okay? We can't get into it. However, over at PayPal, we have access to those PayPal location, locations, and you can send donations there, okay? You can send donations to our PayPal. You can also send donations in cards and letters at our post office box here, okay? 104 North Green Street, box 105, Morganton, North Carolina. It's actually not a post office box. It's just our address now. Okay. It's our address now. Hurricane Heather says she's going to keep her 88 Suburban. I would keep it too. I happen to like 88. Well, I happen to like all Suburbans. They're great vehicles. Do any of you have any questions for me? Do any of you have any questions about anything we talked about today? I didn't mean to turn this into a huge session here, but I wanted to make sure you have the information. <laughs> Polly says, Ron needs a new Lamborghini. Please donate. Yes, that would be nice. I have some car issues I'm trying to solve, and it may cost a good share of money. So, yes, we'd appreciate any donations that you can have. And I know I've asked for money for a computer. I got that. YouTube played games with that. And, yes, eventually I will go to the computer for the programs. Polly's asking, what do you think is going to happen during the next 48 hours? Okay. We're still going to get solar flares off the sun. That plasma radiation will continue to impact the Earth and the other planets for the next week or so. It's going to continue happening. We also have a sunspot that's coming around from the backside of the sun, and it's been shooting off solar flares right and left for the past week or so. So as that comes out to the Earth side facing of the sun, we're going to get more solar flares and as a result, more earthquakes. Okay. Earthquakes, a lot of times, are a result of the solar flares and also planetary alignments. OK, 
Okay, when we have planetary alignments, we have electromagnetic radiation caused by the planetary alignments, and that also heats up the plates and the faults, allowing them to move more freely like that. Okay. Overall, Mount Man is saying how many overall earthquakes? USGS, let me tell you something, guys. USGS is reporting only, let me look at this here. They're not reporting many earthquakes at all. Okay, I'm just telling you. They're not. They're reporting approximately 200. Let me look here. USBS today is reporting 200 earth, 211 earthquakes worldwide. Well, guess what? I've shown you probably two to 300 other earthquakes that USGS didn't even talk about. So let's talk about at least 700 earthquakes a day. 700 earthquakes a day. Some of those USGS will never talk about. A great majority of those, two-thirds of the earthquakes are not even reported by the agency. Okay? They're not reported. Why not? Because the politicians are telling USGS not to report them. Okay? Plain and simple. This has been going on for a very long time now. This is not the first, second, or even third time it's been happening. It's happening a lot. Every day for years now. They're not reporting the earthquakes that are happening. Plain and simple. Hurricane Heather says, salute, sir. I salute all of you. I appreciate and love each and every one of you. I do. Now, I want to go over here and talk about a scripture here for a few minutes. Okay. Tomorrow's lesson of Sunday school in my Come Follow Me lesson will be based on the Savior. What is Palm Sunday? Number one. What does Palm Sunday mean? Okay. And we're going to be talking about the atonement of Jesus Christ. So tune in here to our Sunday school lesson tomorrow about noon. Eastern Time. We will be on the air. Right now, I want to go over to Colossians. Colossians, the third chapter, I'm going to go over here to verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Then I'm going to skip over to a very important verse in verse 21. All the scriptures, verses are important. A lot of things are being overlooked, and a lot of things are not being reported by people. Okay? The next thing is very important. Fathers provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Parents can discourage their children quite often if they harp on them. Do not provoke your children. Servants, that means you and I, all of us, we are servants of our employers. Okay? We're the employees. Employees, obey all things, your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Ending with verse 24, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for there is no respect of persons. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of your inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong, which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Take care of yourselves. 
take care of those around you, love each other. The first and greatest commandment to us is love. I can't wait to see you tomorrow at noon for come follow me, the Savior said. Kathy Payana talked about, talks about a scripture here in Ephesians chapter 6, 14 through 18, says, put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. May God be with you. May God bless you. I ask a blessing of the Lord on each of your heads and your families. May God bless you and God be with you until we meet again. Thank you for being here. Like I've said before, if anything else major happens, we'll be on the air to tell you about it as soon as the information becomes available. I hope you have a good night. Take care, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow evening or tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow morning. <laughs> see you soon. God bless. Good night, everybody.